I am retired, so my portfolio is primarily geared toward income-producing holdings. In my portfolio, I hold several real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs. I started and have been adding positions over the last three years. My REIT holdings represent about 13% of my total portfolio. My largest REIT holding is Realty Income at 55% of my REIT holdings. Realty Income, trading under the New York Stock Exchange symbol O, has a current dividend yield of 5.91% with a five-year dividend growth CAGR of 3.55%. NNN REIT, trading under the symbol NNN, is number two in the REIT category with a current dividend yield of 5.38 and a five-year dividend growth CAGR of 2.47. Medical Property Trust is the smallest slice of my REIT holds. This REIT is speculative in nature. MPW has a dividend yield of 11.17%. MPW cut their dividend in September 2023. One of MPW's tenants is currently going through bankruptcy proceedings. EPR properties trading under the symbol EPR represents 5% of my REIT holdings. EPR has a dividend yield of 8.45%. EPR suspended their dividend payout during the COVID pandemic, resuming payout in July of 2021. WP Carry trading under the symbol WPC also represents 5% of my REIT holdings. WPC spun off their commercial office properties into a separate company. As a result, WPC reduced their dividends with a current dividend yield of 6.8%. Beginning in March of 2024, I added a Realty to the portfolio, representing about 13% of my REIT portfolio. I am growing this position over the coming weeks and months. In early 2022, the U.S. federal funds interest rate began to increase and peaked in July 2023, holding steady until now. The increased borrowing costs negatively affect the share price of REITs. When the borrowing rates begin to decrease, I expect to see share prices of the REITs recover. The exact timing of interest rate cuts is unknown, but many believe the Fed Policy Board will begin cuts at the end of this year or possibly early next year. September shows less than a 50% chance of a decrease. However, today the probability to increase over 50% following the May Consumer Price Index report. November gives a slight edge to an interest rate decrease, but still less than 50%. We will get more information following the Federal Reserve meeting on June the 12th. Agree Realty leases properties to retail stores that most of us are familiar with. Agree Realty owns over 2,100 properties, most that are leased to retailers, retailers with credit ratings considered investment grade. These investment grade leases represent 69% of Agree Realty's portfolio. Agree Realty has a dividend yield of 4.92% and a five-year dividend growth CAGR of 6.16%. Agree Realty pays dividends monthly beginning in January 2021. Previously, Agree Realty paid dividends quarterly. Using fast graphs, I find Agree Realty share prices attractive. They are currently trading at around $61. The price to adjusted funds from operation multiple sits at 15.2 times compared to a normal evaluation of 18.02 times, indicating potential upside. The company is followed by around 13 analysts. 
Analysts are estimating 4.3% growth in 2024 and 3.4% growth in 2025, measured in Adjusted Funds from Operations, or AFFO. The analysts hit their forward estimates about 92% of the time and miss 8% of the time. This provides some sense of confidence in the AFFO forward estimates. If the 10-year Treasury drops back to around 3.5% by the end of next year, I anticipate that Agree Realty will trade at around $68 for the low with a 12.71 return over the next 18 months. Agree Realty could trade as high as $77, returning 20.92% over the next 18 months. Given this backdrop, I plan to continue adding shares of Agree Realty to my portfolio. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and press the like button. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave a comment below. Thank you again.